So uh, I want to welcome all of you. Um, we're very happy that you decided to join us here um, for this webinar. I will tell you a little bit about myself first. Um, again, my name is Andrew Shayan. Um, I'm based here in the USA in San Francisco, California, um, and I've been working with children with autism and families now for about 30 years. And um, this topic is very, of course, very near and dear to my heart and certainly my experiences, all of the experiences that I've had over the last 30 years. Um, and I will say that one of the many gifts that I've received from um, people with autism is that they have taught me an incredible amount about relationships um, and about learning how to um, really connect with people. And um, that may sound um, perhaps unexpected because many of the many of uh, much of what we, we read about individuals with autism is that um, building relationships or having relationships or social interactions with people can be so challenging. Um, I will say that um, in my experience, although um, it can be challenging to develop and build relationships with individuals for whom um, it can be harder, it's also been uh, incredible to learn how to do so in a very, very thoughtful and sensitive way. And it's helped me become a, a more um, aware and thoughtful person, um, a, more, a more compassionate person and a more caring person. Uh, man in the process. So um, I will always be grateful to, to people with autism and their families for teaching me so much over the years. So that said, what I want to share with you this morning is um, really everything that I've learned over the last 30 years about what works <clears throat> to be able to really connect with uh, individuals, especially with children, who um, whose brains are wired in such a way that, that communicating and interacting with people is especially difficult. Um, so there's a lot of research that's been done, um, and I'm going to certainly draw from that. I've spent a lot of time studying autism and studying a lot of different autism intervention treatment approaches and methods and therapies over the years because I've been very um, hungrily searching for um, tools that work and um, ways of bringing myself into uh, interactions with people with autism so that um, ultimately I would have success connecting with and um, communicating with people with autism. So I want to start with something that helped me tremendously about uh, 15 years ago we really started to recognize um, that people's brains, pe people with autism, uh, had different brains than the rest of us. And the reason why that was so important for me to understand is because prior to that, um, oftentimes when interactions didn't go well for me with a particular individual or child with autism, um, I would take it very personally. Um, and I would think that either I wasn't doing it right or uh, or I would sometimes blame the individual with autism and say oh you know this kid just doesn't doesn't like me or it's too hard and I would I would oftentimes give up and get frustrated and and so so this information when it came out uh, about 15 years ago was really crucial for me in, in in having a much deeper understanding of why interacting and communicating with people um, was so hard for people with autism so I want to start with that, um, as well as some things that I have learned over the years. And I'm going to say that um, our technical person in the background, if um, what I'm concerned about is that, okay, hopefully that is that if for some reason um, my screen is still, the PowerPoint is still blocked from view for all of you, um, our technical person in the background, please let me know that. Otherwise, to me, it looks very clean. So hopefully all of you can see that. Fine, we can see. Yes, Andrew, we can, we can see that. Excellent, thank you. Okay, so um, here's what I wanna start with because this is also one of my greatest learnings over the last 30 years. Now, I'm, I'm in this as a professional. Um, I don't have any children with autism myself. 
So um, I've never, in some ways, walk, completely walked in your shoes as parents. However, um, as a professional, I've learned an enormous amount uh, in my, um, you know, thousands of interactions with people with autism over the years. And what I will say is this, that although as a professional, I can be very helpful to all of you as parents, um, your relationship with your child is absolutely the most important relationship that your child will ever have. That's true for typical children as well as children with autism. Um, and I've seen over the years many well-intentioned professionals um, uh, give parents the message that the professional actually um, is going to have a greater impact that professional therapy is going to have um, the, the greatest, most important impact on, on a child than on that child's interactions with their parents or that child's relationship with their parents. And I have learned that that's not actually true, that it's the parent relationship with the child that is always going to have the biggest, deepest, most lasting impact on a child's development especially a child's social development and a child's emotional development. And so I'm emphasizing that because I've seen too many parents over the years stop trusting themselves and, and quickly defer to or trust professionals. What professionals are telling them, advising them, as well as um, uh, professional interactions or professional therapies parents can be led to believe that um, professionals know better and just have more skills. And yes, it's true to some degree that uh, as a professional, I've had more, certainly more professional training, um, studied more about, about autism and about uh, autism treatment and therapy, but that doesn't mean that I have the same um, emotional connection with a child that their parent does. And that's really, really important. And also, parents are around their children every day. You have many, many hours of interaction every day with your child, or at least potential interaction with your child. That is what has the biggest, deepest, um, longest lasting effect on your child. So I wanna just remind all of you as parents about that, okay? So always trust in yourselves and in your interactions with your children as the most important and significant for your children's future. Okay. We don't care about the weather because I'm in San Francisco and you are mostly in the UK. Okay. So I've already said these things and I want to reiterate here today that what we're going to focus on and talk about is the very, very simple but very powerful things that you can do in your everyday life with your child um, that will have a lasting impact on their development, on their communication, on their, their social development, and on their ability to have relationships um, with people, okay? So this is going to be um, very simple and straightforward, but um, to some extent, um, not always easy to do, okay? So I want to uh, show a video that really illustrates this because this is so important to understand, but not just because I said so or because research says so, but because you can actually see what this looks like, okay? Children with autism have different brains, okay? So we are going to look at a video that really helps us, it really helps illustrate this in a very clear way. Now, we're not going to look at a video that's scientific and that's focused on brain research and, and blah, 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 and technical and all that's great. I'm not a brain researcher. What I'm going to focus on is, is how a, a, a child's brain can, can, um, can result in, in um, specific interactions and what that looks like. So let's watch here very closely as this young boy who's 15 months old is interacting with his mom as well as with a therapist uh, around toys, okay? So there's lots of interesting toys. I want you to watch really closely 
watch this guy's eyes and watch uh, what he's looking at and paying attention to in this video. Freezing here because I'm I'm really highlighting that you see right here in this moment he looks up at the therapist and he's been able to do this throughout he's able to shift his eyes very quickly and very easily between the therapist uh, sorry between the toys and the objects in front of him and another person's face the therapist's face mommy's face that's very easy for him to do at this very young age, right? Even before he has words, in fact. So can you all see that very clearly? Are we okay? Chime in. Hi, Andrew. I couldn't see the video at all. You can't see the video at I all. I couldn't. There is another participant who said the same. Ah. Okay. Thank you so much, Susanna, for letting me know that. That's very important. But I could, Andrew. I could see it in here. I could. Wow. I'm another. I'm another listener. I could see it as well. Okay. So I, that means I can see. I can see I, now. I can. Something magical happened, and all of a sudden the video is viewable. Yes, this is so important. Okay, so everybody can see the video now, correct? Yes. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So what I'm what I'm illustrating. <laughs> not good excuse me for just a second I have to get back to the videos so what I was illustrating in that in that video um, and what you saw very clearly is you saw a child's ability to be able to shift their eyes and their focus of attention very quickly between toys that they're interested in playing with right big bird uh, the, the little um, um, pretend uh, uh, eating utensils and people, right? So you saw that little guy going really quickly back and forth between the, the toys in front of him that he was excited about and looking at another person's face. Toys, Big Bird, and there's Mommy and Mommy's face. So he's doing that really quickly and really easily. And as a result, he's taking in a lot about this social experience he's having with people. Sorry, I'm just going back to my video here. Sharing imaginative play. Okay, yay, we're back. This is our video that we wanted to show. Okay. Um, does that make sense? So we saw, again, this is a guy who has a typical brain, and we saw this, this ability to shift very easily between objects and people. And as a result, he's, he's actually learning incredible things very quickly about people, people's faces, about how to, how to engage with people, connect with people, and how to play with people, okay? Now let's take a look at our guy who has autism. And let's watch, watch for the same thing. Watch where his eyes go, where his focus of attention goes when he's again with his mom on the left here and with a therapist and these cool toys. Let's watch. Yeah. You can kind of imitate what he's doing if you want. Again, put your bottle in the spit. 
Burn it out. So I'm again pausing to highlight here that the, the adults are doing exactly the same thing. They're making really exciting, fun things happen with the toys, right? Big Bird's eating, um, uh, they're, they're, they have this little baby bottle that they can feed him with, um, and his focus of attention is 100% on the objects. His eyes have not yet looked up a single time to take in the therapist's face or what the therapist is doing with her eyes or her facial expressions or mom. He's very focused on the objects. Can you see that? Oh, you want my bottle? I want both bottles. He loves, <laughs> he loves play bottles. Mm. 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 Yummy! Now he even smiles in response in that moment to what Big Bird's doing, but he doesn't look up at the therapist's face to say, "Oh, that was kind of cool how you did that." And 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 that's a and and uh, uh, that's a that's an interesting thing to do. And let me see the person who made that happen. He's not yet able to do that. He's his his brain is is wired in such a way that he's really easily able to focus on objects, but not people. <laughs> working really hard to use objects or toys and play to connect with their son and make really fun things happen so that they're actually playing and interacting together. And she's doing all of the right stuff, right? She's smiling, she's being very responsive and very supportive, and she's doing really fun things that he's interested in. The difference is that he's not able to shift his eyes and his attention to her face not because he doesn't love his mom or because he's not enjoying what she's doing, but because his brain is wired in such a way that looking at people's faces and taking them in is much harder than looking at and taking in and studying objects, okay? That's really, really, really important for us to understand, okay? And again, when I first started doing this work and, and um, trying really hard to teach and support uh, individuals with autism, I did not understand this yet because we didn't understand this. The research hadn't yet come along to help make this incredibly clear. And so this is what we're seeing. Now, hopefully everybody can see the PowerPoint again. Please, someone step in if you cannot. Um, so this is the conclusion from all of this important research about, about um, people with autism having different brains. People with autism have brains that, that are wired in such a way that it's much easier to focus on objects. Okay, now, of course, with this also comes an incredible set of skills. Okay, anyone who's, who's um, read anything by Temple Grandin or um, some of our many uh, brilliant artists or, um, uh, intellectuals or people that have people that have done incredible things that have autism understand that some of their accomplishments are possible because they have such detail focused brains they can study and learn incredible things about um, different aspects of the world and science and many different things um, at the same time right Studying and learning from and 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 connecting with and interacting with people uh, can be it can be harder. Okay, so when we think about this, right, the typical brain, as we as we've learned, as we've learned, is much more wired for social interaction, much more wired to be able to look at and take in people and people's faces, and stay with people and interact with people and learn from people's faces. So as you can see, 
if we think about those two children, and then of course how this, um, what the what the the impact is, um, those two children are going to have very different social experiences, right? The child that has a more social brain is going to very quickly be able to to learn that people are fun and people are easy to interact with and 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 learn how to communicate with people and and socially connect with people. That's going to be easier. And the child with autism is going to have a much harder time doing that, right? They're going to um, uh, maybe more quickly disengage from social interactions. They're going to be much more quickly overwhelmed and confused by what people are doing around them because they're not taking people in as much. They're not, they're not easily observing what's happening around them socially. <clears throat> so this is really important. And the reason why I'm emphasizing this so much is because especially as parents, when when you try so hard and you're doing all the right things just like that mom in the video when you're trying so hard to interact with your child and your child is not staying with you they're not looking at you they're not responding to you they're moving away from you they're turning away they're staying locked on a toy or an object no matter how hard you're trying to get their attention this can be very difficult and, and it can feel very much like your heart is breaking and like your, your, your child doesn't want to be with you and your child's not interested in you and even perhaps your child doesn't love you. And that's why this is so important because none of those things are true. It's just that your child has a different brain that makes social interaction more difficult. Okay? So as a result, this is what we need to always remember, <clears throat> your child just needs extra support. And we're gonna look very closely at what that support looks like today, okay? But really, if as a parent, you can keep this in your heart and in the back of your mind always, that it's not that he doesn't love me, it's not that he doesn't wanna be with me, it's not that he or she doesn't wanna interact with me, it's that it's just hard. Right? which means I, as a parent or as a professional, have to really hang in there and have to give myself lots of encouragement even when I'm not getting the responses that I want or that I wish I were getting. And that is not easy. I will certainly tell you as a professional, even after 30 years of doing this, that with particular children in, in many situations who can be especially uh, challenging to engage, um, I can hit a wall and I can give up and I can feel frustrated. Um, of course, I keep trying and I've learned lots of different strategies to keep me going, but I recognize really um, how difficult and challenging this could be at times for families. <clears throat> okay, so that said, there's a lot we can do to make it easier for our children, okay? So what I want to what I want to focus a bit on now is is this really important um, information that we've learned from child development. Now I have a child development background, uh, early childhood special education. So I, I've studied a lot and learned a lot about development, how all children, typical children, learn to interact and communicate with people, as well as what parents do very naturally in everyday life to strengthen their children's social abilities, to connect with their children, to teach their children how to have relationships with people and, and, and bond with people and communicate with people. So parents that have typical children are doing lots of really cool things every day to give their children um, uh, healthy social and emotional development, okay? And this is very important to understand. And in, in many ways, it's going to help guide us in all of our efforts with individuals with autism. <clears throat> so I want to say that a lot, child development is a, is a, a massive body of, of, of research and literature and, and wonderful um, uh, knowledge that we can all draw from. But I'm going to boil it down very simply to the idea of following and leading, that much of child development and much especially of what we know about how to support a child's social development and emotional development and, and ability to have relationships has to do with following and leading, right? In all of our interactions with children, right? Parents do this all the time. Parents are either following their children or they're leading their children or they're doing both at different times. 
and I really want to emphasize this, um, <clears throat> that as a starting point, what we know about the youngest children, what gives them the biggest head start is that they have an experience that their, that their parent follows their very early initiatives. And what I mean by that is, is their, uh, what their eyes are looking at, what their actions are, what they're doing with their bodies or, or the kind of sounds they're making, right? When a child has an experience that their parent notices and follows um, and responds to their initiatives, all of a sudden a child starts to connect more with their parents socially. And we're gonna take a look at what that looks like because that's a really crucial starting point for all of our children, including and especially children who have a social and communication uh, difference in learning. So let's take a look. This is a, an example of a very young uh, uh, a baby with her mom. And let's watch closely at how the mom responds to this baby's different initiatives. See how in this moment, when the, when the baby is making sounds and mom is making sounds, the baby is looking up at her uh, mom's face so much more. Um, and and as as baby is, is doing some actions and kind of reaching out and touching or exploring her mom's mouth, mom's kind of chewing on baby's fingers a little bit, nom, 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 nom. right? And just all of a sudden inviting her baby to do it more and, and, and bringing baby more into an interaction with mom. She's mom's very focused. She's very available. She's, she's really attentively waiting for her baby to do something and she's following her baby's initiatives. Okay. So this is what we know from child development ultimately strengthens the bond between a child and their parent and really teaches the child what social interaction is and how it works. Right. There's an initiation and then there's a response and baby does something and mom does something. Baby does something and mom does something. And that's this amazing starting point, right, for social development. And it's also really important to consider for all of our children that have a special difficulty in this area. Okay. So um, we can really see that, that, um, uh, in play between this mom again and the mom the mom doesn't start by by telling the baby what to do or by leading the interaction necessarily at all mom is just watching baby closely and responding to baby's initiatives okay and so as a result the baby's experience is oh mom noticed that mom's with me right um what i am am, am thinking about or what i'm doing um, is, is interesting to mom. And now mom's doing something in response. Very crucial. Okay. So I want to talk now about leading because, um, what, what we've learned a lot over the years is that, uh, also, um, uh, it, it doesn't make sense of course, over time for parents to just follow their children's, um, lead all the time and, and to, and to just be in a, in, in a role where they're waiting for and encouraging their child's initiatives. There's a lot of times in life where, of course, children have to learn to follow other people's leads, okay? And so this is really important to understand that in terms of, of everyday family life, that if you want to lead your child, and, and of course, you're going to need to do that in many different uh, uh, instances when you're trying to um, have your child take a bath or where they need, to, they need to behave as they need to behave or do what you need them to do, parents who teach their child cooperation <clears throat> to cooperate well, do so because they make leading a very positive experience. And what they do is they make their behavior extremely predictable for their child by slowing down and saying 
or showing the child exactly what they're going to do or what's going to happen next. For example, right, um, if a child is about to, um, if a child uh, wants to um, reach out and touch mommy, right, um, mommy may, 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 may say, oh, not on my mouth, honey, on my cheek, right? She might just give baby the information that it, it, it feels better if you touch my cheek rather than sticking your whole hand in my mouth. Just one example. An example from my experience with, with children with autism is that if I'm going to um, create a social interaction with a child around, uh, let's say, for example, a squeeze game, if I'm, if I'm going to squeeze a child's arm, and many children respond very positively to physical contact when it's done thoughtfully, if I'm going to squeeze a child's arm, I may approach a child slowly and say, I'm going to squeeze your arm, here I come squeeze and give them the information that I'm offering a social interaction through a squeeze. If I just grab their arm and start squeezing it, oftentimes, right, what do we know about people with autism? They may not be ready for that because they're not watching me and taking me in so, so easily. So I have to make my behavior really predictable. And that's so important for you to understand in your everyday interactions with your child. Oftentimes, and this is a, a separate webinar, but Sometimes behavior problems for our children happen when we don't make our behavior for them very predictable, okay? So that's very important to understand, okay? The other piece I wanna highlight is that children with autism um, really need help strengthening their initiation muscles, right? So interacting with people is about both initiating and responding. Conversations, back and forth exchanges, are, are crucial in social development. I have to be able to initiate something, share something, start something with a, a thought or a facial expression, and then I have to wait for another person to, to, to respond to me, and then, and then it's, it's, it's a back and forth. So here's what we know about children with autism, and I really wanna emphasize this strongly, because I've been at this for 30 years, and I've seen, um, especially over the last 10 or 15 years, some really significant problems happening um, in, in the world of autism treatment. What I see happening is that we know that initiation is crucial. A child has to be able to decide to move towards another person and communicate with them and interact with them because they're interested and because they're motivated, not simply because someone is telling them to. Okay, and so what I've seen a lot happen over the years, especially for, for younger children with autism, is that sometimes uh, many of our approaches is emphasizing getting children with autism to respond. So I may tell a child, you know, uh, put the puzzle piece in or stand up or touch your nose, but oftentimes a child is learning that social interactions are about responses, that they respond to what I do, not to necessarily what they want to do. And that the problem with that is it oftentimes is not lasting long term. So we have to remember that our children's initiations, right, their ability to, to start and then sustain a social interaction or to be able to communicate without anyone telling them to, but they're able to communicate because they really want to get their message across and they're going to keep trying and they're going to keep trying, right? If we don't help our children do that, oftentimes what I've seen and what we see is we see teenagers and, and, and older children with autism that are great responders, but have very weak initiation skills. And when you think about that, it's going to be very difficult to be successful holding a job or having a social relationship if you can't start a conversation, if you can't start an act of communication with another person, if, you're, if you learn only to wait for someone else to tell you what to do, okay? So I'm emphasizing this because the earlier we start this with our children, the better. And we know this is true, that children uh, who, who develop strong ability to initiate communication and social interaction have the best long-term outcomes, okay? But we sometimes get a little sidetracked in our, in our autism treatment. Why? Because it's easier sometimes to get a child to respond to us than it is to wait for their initiations. 
So that said, we really want to encourage you as parents, especially parents of younger children, but this is true regardless of your child's age. The question I will ask is, is your child able to initiate communication or, or interaction with you without you starting it first or without you telling them to? It's a really important consideration, okay? How are we doing in time? Okay, not well. Um, I will say this right now that all of us at, at, at the Transforming Autism Project are aware that, that what we're, what we're um, introducing, the information that we're sharing right now is so foundational. It's really, really critical information for parents. Um, there's nothing more important than having a clear um, idea or a clear approach, a, a, a strategy, a way forward of how to build a strong relationship with your child. So there's absolutely no way that we can cover this in a <laughs> one hour um, quick webinar. So we're going to have many subsequent webinars that really follow up on this topic. And I wanna say that right now because of course, I was so ambitious and had so many videos and so many strategies I wanted to share with all of you and we're probably not going to get to all of them. Oh well, I've learned flexibility over the years um, by working with individuals with autism and family. So, um, uh, I want you to know that we're, we're, we're going to um, be, be uh, going back to this topic and really give you a lot more information and tools uh, over a more sustained period of time, okay? That said, here's what we've learned about um, parents who are able to build very successful long-term um, relationships with their children and, and where we see children who have very good mental health outcomes, children who are who are confident and healthy and strong um, and have a very good sense of themselves, very, very good self-esteem who do quite well later in life. This is where it starts. Um, the parent's thoughts, attitudes, and behavior conveys to a child in early interactions, I completely accept you as you are right now and I wanna be with you. You're amazing, you're cool. You're, I love you, you're incredible, okay? So parents that can convey that to their child in, in early interactions um, are really giving their kids a powerful start. I wanna know you better, I wanna find out more about you. I'm gonna pay attention to you. I'm going to learn about your initiatives um, and, and what's most interesting and exciting to you. I wanna learn about what's motivating to you. Um, and I'm gonna do this by giving you my full attention, okay? What you enjoy and like to do or say is good and interesting and important, right? When that baby's making a sound and mom's going, yeah, and she's smiling and giving her baby this amazing face, her baby's experience is, oh, mom thinks that's really cool that I'm making this sound. And mom's actually doing the sound back to me, right? And that means mom must think I'm good and, and, I, and I, I wanna do it more and I wanna stay with mom longer. Okay, these are crucial, crucial early experiences that we wanna give our children. Um, you are a good and interesting and fun person to be with. So you can see how that baby early on is getting that message, right? I love you, I'm here with you. You're the coolest thing in the world, right? And sometimes with the best of intentions, my experience, um, in, 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 in the autism um, education and treatment world is we're not always giving our children this message. We're trying really hard to change their behavior. We're trying really hard to correct um, and modify um, what perhaps is um, our child's best effort or best attempt to communicate with us. Okay, so I really want to emphasize this tremendously. We have to try to give our children this message. Um, okay, so how do we do this? I think what I'm going to do is go back to a video rather than more PowerPoint slides because videos are so helpful and so powerful as ways to... Um, illustrate what we're talking about. So I'm going to go to a quick video here. Um, this is from a wonderful approach called 
Hannon, H-A-N-E-N, based in Canada. It's actually, um, it was developed by a bunch of speech and language pathologists as a way to help families understand how to do exactly the things we're talking about, how to, how to really support and strengthen their children's early communication and social interaction abilities, okay? So we're going to watch because I think there's some wonderful illustrations that show parents um, really doing exactly what we've talked about, showing up and really encouraging their children's initiations and really, really giving their children the message that I'm with you. Um, what you're thinking or feeling or trying to communicate is good and exciting and I wanna learn more about it. And then we see the impact this has on a child's ability to keep going and keep trying to communicate and interact even when it's hard. So let's watch this video. The first step in following your child's lead is to know what his lead is. When you get face to face with your child and observe, wait, and listen, you'll find out just what this lead is. Blue! Whoa! Come Whoa! Whoa! Look, Helen, what's that? Right there. What's that? Whoa! I just want to highlight first here that this is mom and dad. This is their child with autism here. This guy who's over here looks like he's writing. And this is the younger child who does not have autism. And mom and dad are trying really hard here to get him engaged in a bubble game, right? They want him to play with the family, play with his brother. Okay, watch. Makai, do it again. Observing, waiting, and listening, or owling, helps Makai's parents discover that Makai's more interested in drawing bubbles than playing with them. He's drawing oh, you're bubbles. Drawing bubbles. Watch what happens when dad follows Makai's lead. Wow, Makai, that's good. Makai answers Dad's question. What's that? What's Bubble. Bubbles? Bubble. Daddy's Bubble. turn? Gives Dad the pen so Dad can draw too, and counts the bubbles on the page. Bubble. Huh? Makai's turn? <gasps> what the hell? Me too. Bubbles. Too. When you owl, observe, wait, and listen, the best place to be is face to face with your child. This position makes it easier for you both to look at one another. Getting face to face can make all the difference to how your child communicates with you. When mom's not right at Davis's eye level, he doesn't look at her or say anything. But when she lies on her side, Davis both looks at mom and talks to her at the same time. You can pick your younger child up and hold him where it's easy for you to look at one another. Or you can sit your child on your knees facing you. You can also get face to face by crouching down. In the beginning, some children find it hard to be face to face. If that's the case with your child, Try being at his physical level first. Dad puts Isaac on his lap, and when he's ready, Isaac gets himself face to face with Dad. Little Isaac. Now take a moment to think of a few ways you can position yourself to be face to face with your child. Okay. Just some very quick, clear illustrations. Um, and the reason why that's so important, even though it may not, it may seem um, subtle, is that if we go back to the video that we saw early on of the, of the two different children, what we saw was the, the child uh, who, who, who had autism, how difficult it was for him to take in people socially, to look um, at, at uh, the, either the, the therapist or his mom. And so this is really a, a strong and powerful reminder that it's so important um, to make it easy and easier for our children to take us in and really shift their attention to our faces um, in, in, in the context of everyday interactions, okay? 
Um, and so the reason why I'm, I'm emphasizing this so much is that, um, you know, family life is busy and chaotic and crazy, especially if you have multiple children uh, and certainly always when you have a child uh, with autism. So um, the, the, the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make this very simple and straightforward is that I think parents sometimes get the message from autism professionals that they're not doing enough. They have to do more. Um, they have to be therapists and they have to be constantly um, trying to engage their children in, in interactions or to play with their children. And this can be incredibly exhausting for families. Um, and so um, I, I think that the, the important message here um, is that this is about quality, not quantity. That even if you just can do five minutes with your child and just really sit with them um, observe them attentively, right? Don't do anything, right? You sit down with your child, there's some toys that they like to play with. You're just going to sit and plop down. You can even have a cup of coffee if you'd like, whatever it might be. You don't have to do a lot and make a lot happen. All you have to do is watch what your child's doing very closely, okay? Wait for them to do or say something. Uh, like for example, a child picks up a car Oh, you're driving your car. That's it. You're watching their initiations, their actions, and you're naming them. Oh, you're driving your car up the couch. Your child is having an experience that, okay, mommy and daddy are with me. I'm not alone. I'm not by myself, I'm not playing by myself. Your child also has the experience that what's inside of me, right? Every child has this, this gold mine of, of, of thoughts and, and feelings and interests that they wanna bring out into the world and express, okay? So your child is getting the message when you do this that what's inside of me is good, is okay, mommy, Mommy loves it, mommy's uh, with me, right? People like to be with me. Mommy likes being with me when I'm uh, doing the things that I most enjoy, okay? This can have a huge impact on the connection that you have with your child. And I've seen over the years that many children with autism um, do not get this experience enough. Typical children get it a lot more because their brains are wired for social interaction. So they're more responsive to it. Uh, they, they tend to stay much longer with their parents in interactions and, and mommy and daddy aren't having to work as hard. So it just tends to be easier, okay? So um, I will also say this, and you saw this, you didn't see this as, as much in the videos, um, but imitating your child's sounds and words as much as possible. This is always a huge challenge, um, or I should say a huge concern for our, our parents. I wanted to talk, I wanted to talk. I wanted to learn to communicate. If he could just tell me what he wanted or needed. Remember that we have to start where our children are, okay? Not where we want them to be. So part of this is really a reminder that when your child is trying to even just make sounds, if you make sounds back to your child, your child says, ah, bah, 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 and you say, ah, bah, 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 all of a sudden, right, your child then maybe makes some more sounds back to you, and they're, they're getting the message that mommy heard me, daddy heard me, okay? Even if the words are not correct. This is very important. So imitate your child's sounds and words as much as possible, okay? Our children can get very good sometimes at, at um, memorizing words and saying words. So we have a lot of children that can actually learn big vocabularies and have very rich vocabularies. But what's not developed is their ability to use those words in back and forth exchanges with people, right? So if your child says something and you repeat it back to your child, right? All of a sudden your child then looks at you, listens, tunes in, and then you're having a, an exchange with your child versus your child says something and you're constantly trying to push them to the next level of saying more, okay? Let's see, I am going to pause there because 
I've already said this to some degree, making an interaction easier for your child is so important, right? Um, so your child's able to anticipate your behavior. So really, if your child loves it when you pick them up or when you tickle them or when you're pushing them on a swing, if you just do the same thing a few times and then you pause and wait and give your chance, to give your child a chance to actually let you know that they want the activity to continue. This can be a huge, very positive way to lengthen your interactions with your child and, and really teach your child how back and forth interactions and turn taking work. Okay, very important. So we can show more videos of this in the coming um, webinars, different video examples of this. And I'll just say a couple of quick things that I've learned over the years, because I've done them a lot myself. <laughs> and I've seen many therapists and, 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 and families um, do these things. And um, um, the result, unfortunately, can be that our kids um, give up on social interactions. So um, I spent a lot of years or a lot of months and in, 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 in interactions constantly directing my child to focus on what I wanted them to focus on, <laughs> not what they wanted to focus on. Um, the result was that that um, kids would stay with me in an interaction, but only to get me off their back, right? Until until they 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 did what 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 I wanted them to do, and then they took off and left. Okay, I didn't I wasn't encouraged earlier in my career to focus as much on recognizing and acknowledging what my child was focused on and interested in, and in meeting them there, um, and then expanding that over time. Okay, and this is a big one and a hard one for me and for so many of us. Oftentimes, the way that we are interacting with our kids is by asking lots of questions. What color is it? How many do you have? Do you like this one? Blah, blah, blah. What did you do at school today? Uh, you know, it's, it's constant. And, and as adults just tend to, this is how we tend to interact with children in general. Um, Oh, who's your teacher? How did you like school today? Um, you know, who are your friends? Um, what team do you like? You know, it's just a natural adult way of interacting. And we, what, what happens, I think, in the experience of many um, children with autism is that um, when we ask a question, oftentimes, and our children don't have the, the ability to quickly come up with a response um, because their brains are, are wired differently, because when we're asking them a question, they have to pay attention to what we're saying, they have to listen, then they have to come up with a, a response and sometimes learning language and being able to get the language out is so difficult for our children. Oftentimes questions result in very brief, um, short interactions with our kids and, and oftentimes our kids exit the interactions quickly when we ask a lot of questions. So be very aware of your own tendency to do this and rather than asking questions, comment on or name what's happening in the moment or what your child is doing or interested in, right? So instead of what color is it, right? Ah, I see you have a blue truck. Ah, you, you like your blue car, right? Um, you know, how many do you have? Ah, you have three cars, right? Or ah, daddy, daddy has a blue car, right? So I'm, I'm making statements. And what happens with statements is statements invite um, uh, more social interaction. When you watch children play with each other, they're not asking each other questions. If you go to a playground and you watch preschoolers interact with each other, kids interact with each other, they don't start with, what color is it? How many trucks do you have, right? They're like, you know, they're basically making comments and statements. Oh, it's a big truck. It's going over there. No, he goes up. Ah, it's 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 comments, and I think sometimes um, we forget this in our in our best efforts to teach. Okay, so be mindful of the questions. Okay, ultimately learning how to how to ask questions and respond to questions come later in development. Okay. Oh my goodness. Um, it's 1057. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to give you an opportunity um, to, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to invite you to ask any questions that you'd like to at this point. I covered a lot of information and um, 
I would like to hear from you if there are any particular questions that you have about anything that I've touched on or covered or any specific questions that you'd like to ask about your child, your particular child and your experience with them. So I will. Are you guys all with me? Yep. Hopefully. There we go. For some reason, my this part of my window. There we go. The control panel. That's what I needed. Um, it sounds like s I hear someone's voice. Would yeah, that's. Like yes. Yeah, hi Andrew. This is Balu uh, from hi. in East Yorkshire. How are you? Hi Balu. Um, well, thank you. Welcome. Thank you for for being brave and, and asking a question. What? what <laughs> I think what for the autistic parent, you have to be brave anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is a question because I think I I think I was following transferring autism once or twice. Not honest, not much. Except uh, one of my friend told me because my child is nine year old, so yeah. two and a half years. Because a lot of stuff you shown me mostly toddlers. Yeah, like someone who's left one, two, three year old max. So till two and a half he wasn't he was okay. Then after that he got epilepsy. That's what it all started. So he's on ADHD medication now. He was quite bad previously. After ADHD medication, his, his, his approach is much better, etc. So I'm just asking from your end, so how could we deal with somebody nine years? He had a lot of behavioral issues, but he's slowly getting better after ADHD medication. Okay. And uh, we normally agree on one of the things I quite like you said, you are the best, the parents, which we always thought we have to do it ourselves. Yeah, And I got today a thumbs up from the man who knows better than me. He said you are the best, so I quite like that. Yeah, so so we're just trying now to you know try it. He's in mainstream school. We're struggling, especially last few months, but now he's getting better. But we still need to understand how we can understand him. But he, he's quite good. He's 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 like more social. I, when I take you to McDonald's, he go himself order the food what he likes because he knows the pattern. I ask him like you go and get your bag if you want it. So he'll go in out of 10 people, he just go and ask that question. So when you mentioned about initiation is a better outcome for the kids, which was which felt me very happy because what I was doing was quite right because I let yeah. him do the job. So thank you for that claps. So yeah, yeah, so I'm just thinking about what suggestion you're gonna give us, give to me and my, my wife. Absolutely. So, so here's a, so first of all, Lou, thank you for for uh, acknowledging the message that you you should be getting and should always have have received that that um, you and your wife and your family are 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 amazing and are the most important uh, people in your son's life. Um, and that that also like even something like like having bringing being being able to have him go to a, a restaurant or McDonald's and be able to order food that he wants is a huge triumph that's really amazing and that's i i, I give you uh, and, and your wife so much credit and acknowledgement for 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 walking him through those steps i'm sure it, it didn't happen overnight it was probably a lot of effort <laughs> to to get him there right so what i would say is even though he's 9 okay yeah. Um, a lot of what I see with, with again, um, I, I work with children across the entire age spectrum. Um, what's true in terms of the difficulty of being able to initiate and sustain social interaction is true across the lifespan. Um, those struggles and those challenges don't end as well. The techniques and the strategies that I'm talking about, about really um, tuning into um, what, what he's trying to communicate to to you through the, the 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 communication skills that he has, and I don't know how he's communicating if he's communicating with words or with gestures, or with with pictures or sign. Can I ask that first? How how he how he communicates? Yeah, he um, communicates with his words. He started words. talking. Yeah, yeah. I means he okay. he got the vocabulary. He, he he's used to use pecs like uh, last year. But after ADHD and everything, his his communication is much better now. He only talks; he never show any pictures, or anything like that. Okay, fantastic. Um, so I, I would definitely say that 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 that's a, a a huge deal that he's able to to develop and and use words to to get his message across to all of you. But I I would go back to the most important thing um, from from my perspective for somebody that's nine is that their ability to have successful 
especially social interactions and social relationships, is, is their ability to not only initiate but to sustain back and forth communication or social interaction. And I would pay really close attention right now to how, he's, how your son is able to do that. If he, if he, for example, communicates only to get something he wants and then he's quickly gone from the interaction, then what I would really spend time doing is really trying to build his ability to stay with you a little bit longer in everyday social interactions around, especially first, around something that's, that's of interest or something that's meaningful or motivating to him. Does that make sense? Because yeah, yeah. oftentimes what we don't, what we underestimate is that, especially with our kids that have learned to communicate to get something that they want, um, that's very important. But it doesn't mean that they're able to stay in social interactions because they are enjoying what's happening in the interaction back and forth. And if we don't build that muscle for him, and he's nine, so actually I would say he's still really young. He has a lot of years still before he reaches adulthood. We want him to, to be motivated to stay in interactions with people because he enjoys it, because it's meaningful, because it's motivating for him, not just to get something he wants. And so that's something that you can think about and talk about and we'll present much more in the future, uh, in future webinars, how to really strengthen his social motivation and really build his social staying power so that he's able to stay with you longer um, in social interactions. Make sense? Yeah, sure. Thank you. So I approach still like OWL approach, all approach, even for the nine year old. Yeah, absolutely. And again, I, I would I would always try um, by by watching what he does and says very closely and then trying to uh, acknowledge that and reinforce that and 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 build on that so that he gets the message that what I'm doing and my best efforts at, at, at interaction are acknowledged and are, are, are powerful and successful. And so I'm gonna keep going and keep trying, okay? Because because so many kids that I've seen um, can give up on that far too quickly. They can exit social interactions very quickly because it's hard to, to stay involved and stay engaged with people. Um, so we really wanna build up his strength and his staying power and his confidence by giving him, again, more and more um, um, slow, gradual successes over time. And sometimes that means doing what he wants to do, um, especially right now for longer periods so that he stays with you. Do you know what I mean by that? So for example, if he, I don't know what, what, what he loves to do, but if he really likes trains and he wants to look at or play with or talk about trains and you guys are like, you know what, we're done with the trains, that's too much with the trains, let's do something else. Um, he, he still may not have developed good staying power in interactions even around trains. And so mm -hmm. we may need to, to spend more time with trains to again, build his his social staying power. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, yeah, okay. so like he yeah. understands some of the different things. Yeah, but I agree, thanks for that. Okay, Balu, thank you so much. I, I wish that, um, that, that we had more time, but please come back. I, it sounds like you've been staying with, um, uh, you've been with with the, following the Transforming Autism Project for quite a while. We're we're, um, we're we're building momentum, and we want to have a lot more resources and tools and supports available for more families. So thank you for um, for being with us, and um, and good, you know best of luck to you, and and hopefully we can be of more support in the coming weeks. Yeah, thank you, Andrew, and thank you, Guy, for your support. Thank you, Balu. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, how are we doing on time? Um, I will wait, and if I don't hear, if, if I can just hear crickets, I'll keep going. But one quick question. Um, yes. When, when are the other ones actually running? So we have, we have an upcoming webinar this Friday. I believe it is, uh, I'm not sure what time, what time it's scheduled for because I'm, I'm on my, my California US time. Uh, 10, 10 a.m. Sorry? 10 a.m. It's a 10 a.m. Okay, thank you. It's, so so there's, there's, a, there's the, the same topic with a, a couple of different therapists, um, Kendall and Susanna, who are wonderful, amazing um, um, seasoned autism therapists. They're gonna be presenting on the same topic uh, Friday at 10 a.m. And then uh, next month, um, there's a good chance that we're going to come back and revisit this topic, although um, I'm not exactly sure about that, but we, we're, we're, we offer these um, every once a month. Again, and, and there's, a, there's a week that, the, um, that we have this on a, typically on a Tuesday and then on a Friday. So you can look forward to them every month at the same time.
Victoria. We're actually taking a, a break for the summer, so there won't be one in August. Um, we'll be back in September. Um, and as we go forward um, on the webinars page, which is transformingautism.org slash webinars, that's where you can um, find the information about what's coming up and when and how you can register for it. Uh, yeah, I already know that one because I registered for this one. But what I was actually saying to Andrew, um, because you know you said you didn't have time to all go through it, will you actually bring out some more webinars related to this? Yes, yes, and yes. Um, so, Victoria, it, um, we are um, constantly in the process of, of um, developing more and developing more tools and resources and support. So, um, I think all of us were very aware that when we came to the table and, and decided on this topic, that this was going to, we were going to need to revisit this topic um, frequently. So, what I would say is definitely stay tuned to, to, to the Transforming Autism website for more tools and more resources. I know that this PowerPoint is gonna be available um, as well as the recording of, 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 the, of what we just did. Um, and then of course the recording of Friday's webinar are gonna be available. Um, and, and I will definitely promise you that in, in future webinars, you can look forward to much more follow-up content on this very same topic of how to, how to really build um, a, a, a powerful lifelong relationship with with your child and really strengthen your child's social and emotional development. So we're definitely going to come back to this. Um, an hour doesn't quite cut it, <laughs> as I can as I can um, uh, you know. So I, I appreciate you um, wanting more on this topic. So does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Victoria. Hi. Hello. Hi. Welcome. I just wanted to pop on to um, thank you. Uh, thanks a lot for the content that you shared today. It was, uh, it was the content was incredibly. It sounded simple, but uh, it's incre incredibly um, challenging sometimes to do it, and sometimes we get sidetracked, as you pointed yeah. out rightly. Yeah, sounds simple, but very key, very fundamentally important. Points. I just wanted to thank you for sharing what you shared today. Well, thank you so much. That's that means a lot to me, and I, I'm I'm grateful for you to share that that feedback with us. That's that's um that's so um helpful to hear. And you know, again, you, you're exactly right that it's extremely simple, but can be extremely difficult to do in, in practice and really sustain for so many of the reasons that we touched on and. And many more. So I, I have been in, in awe really over the years of, of how um, parents' love and persistence and devotion to their to their children will push through even the most the most difficult and and, and frustrating and, and I think what can feel like like hopeless circumstances to keep going. So um, so I, I think you know you have inspired me by sharing what you just shared, and I I um, I hope you're able to connect with other families as well because. Um, families supporting and inspiring one another is so crucial. Um, so I, I hope you can connect with other families who, who you can, um, you know, uh, support uh, on the journey. Because you're right, it can, it, it's, it's not so easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, I had one um, more thing to share if, if there's time. Oh, yes. Um, so yeah. So I'm um, a speech language therapist in the UK. I'm in. Uh, the south of England. Um, uh, one of the uh, one family approached me saying that uh, this child who is around ten years old, she is she has been through intensive ABA, mm -hmm. and the the point that you brought out today, you know, the, the, it's very easy to get children to respond. So that that has been the pattern that has stuck with her. So she yeah. she just likes to. You know, respond in in a in a ABA manner, and the she's got quite uh, good vocabulary and everything, language and all yeah. that. But when when she has to use it functionally, or when there is a question that is um, not exactly that is in in a in a context in a particular context, she's yeah. unable to provide the same answer that she would do uh, in an in a controlled manner. You know, right. 
in a cl clinically controlled manner. Yes. So I think it, she's been through intensive AVA. So um, sounds like I'm blaming it, but um, I, I I have a feeling that she needs to unlearn that pattern. And you know, with all the things that you shared today, I think when we put that into action, um, it should probably it should probably uh, we should discover something more about this child. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Yes, yes, uh, um, beautiful. Do said. you think? Yeah. Do you think that you know this ABA pattern has caused? Is my uh, thinking right? Um, is my guess right? Is I wanted to ask you about. Yeah, and he, he yes, I, I, I would definitely agree w with everything that you've said, and certainly I, I've had exactly the same experience. I will say that I, I worked uh, for many years with, within the, the ABA industry and had a lot of ABA training myself. And what mm -hmm. I what I've learned actually is that um, there there um, some of what we what we're seeing is really problematic isn't necessarily ABA itself, but the app the way ABA is applied. Um, and so, in other words, there is ABA now that's 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 um, a, a certain branch of ABA, more naturalistic. Um, I think more um, more more child. Um, how can we say more child development informed? That's mm -hmm. really having really focusing a lot more on initiation and on on really engaging um, um, children in back and forth uh, uh, social interactions. Um, and so, I, but I do think that what's happened because so many people have been trained in ABA, but um, and oftentimes when people are quickly trained in ABA, the way I was trained when I was younger is just get the child to respond. And so when 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 I'm interacting with a child in that way, and I'm just doing something or saying something, and the child's responding, I'm doing something, the child's responding, and I'm not also setting up interactions where a child can move towards me and initiate spontaneously we can get into, as you described, some very set patterns. And I think this girl you're describing is, is absolutely, um, has, has absolutely had that experience where she's learned because she's, she's been responding so much, she's learned that the way social interaction works is somebody does something and then I respond and that's yes. it. And so the problem is there is going to be a little bit of a painful period for everybody of really waiting and waiting and waiting um, you know, again, thoughtfully, strategically kind of setting up the environment where she's motivated, but really waiting for her initiatives and for her to, to put together the steps of, of communicating and interacting with people um, and, and doing so of her own will, not just because she's told to, but she's gotten really used to um, waiting for people to take the lead. And so there is going to be a period, but I, I've worked through this with many children and I can guarantee there's gold on the, on the other side of the rainbow, but sometimes <laughs> we have to really wait and we also have to shift the approach to facilitate initiation and, not, and, and really get away from our comfort zone of, wow, look at that, this kid's responding and wow, that looks so great on, on data and wow, you know, there is a shift that's necessary and sometimes it can be a really hard shift for families as well as for professionals so i love that you're spotlighting that and that you're ready to do it so right. yeah <laughs> that shift um and you will you will be incredibly and beautifully surprised at what she's capable of um right right that. i said i'm going to work with her mother Inter quite interestingly her mother says you know i am no idea how to do it any other way because I've been doing this all yes. myself, and now I recognize that you know this this is it has gone all wrong. Um, it has definitely taught her skills and vocabulary and language, but you know, the the natural interaction is not happening. So I'm going to be working with the mother and not the child in brainstorming ideas to create such an environment and create. Um, such a flow between flow and connection between the mother and child, between parents and the child. I love it. That sounds so exciting and fantastic. Um, and I, I will I will suggest one thing is that sometimes um, video has helped tremendously, has helped many families that I've worked with be able to begin to recognize the mm -hmm. much more subtle um, initiatives that their child is taking that they might be missing because they're looking for bigger, uh, bigger signs. 
So sometimes okay. video can be an incredibly powerful tool to spotlight and then blow up a child's attempts to initiate. Um, and so that might really help um, all of you be, begin to recognize her, 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 her early initiatives, even if they're even if they're not strong, and really blow them up, and 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 then of course really reinforce them and and build on them. Video can be extremely helpful for that. So just well, a thought. Right. Thank you. So I ask the parents to record videos as and when they can and share it, and then we can discuss. Right? Absolutely. I think it can be a very very helpful tool because it'll be a big adjustment for everyone. Right. Um, yes. Thank you. Can, Thank you. Also, yeah, and, and 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 it can also really help um, um, people keep going when people feel discouraged, right? When we're when we're really paying attention to those subtle initiatives, that, right. that oh my gosh, did you guys see that? Wait, rewind it again. Look, look, he just looked up at you and smiled. Wait, let's look at that again. Pause it. Freeze it. Look at it. That sometimes can really help parents um, um, feel more hopeful and excited that it, that initiation is possible. Oh so. yes. Oh yes, I love that. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so so good luck. I'm cheering for you. Um, please keep in touch with us. Let us know how it goes. Thank you. Thank you yes. very much.